His milky white skin glowed in the light of the lamp, almost luminescent, clean, untouched, brand new skin, with only the same birthmarks he had always had. This made me wonder if his green eyes would still have the silver flecks in them. I couldn't wait to look up into them once again. Just as instructed, I placed the needle of the IV into his arm. Any moment now he would rise from the box, and if all went well, this was the beginning of our happily ever after. As I waited for his chest to begin rhythmically rising and falling, I thought back to the sad day that this insanity began. I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. This is the end for us. Those words appeared on the screen of my iPhone while I delivered a lecture on the importance of internet safety to a hall of 300 students that I had been roped in to give. I stuttered on the next few words but managed to finish off the paragraph I was reciting from memory about the legislation being passed pertaining to revenge porn sites. Remember, once it's out on the internet, it is impossible to remove. Take it from the computer engineer. I ended the presentation earlier than scheduled and ran through the halls to my car, barely able to see through the wall of tears that had formed over my eyes. I bit my bottom lip to stiffen my sobs until I could no longer contain them. Why was he doing this to me? After everything we'd gone through, after the chemotherapy he'd endured the previous year, and I along with him, after me being there when his dad died, why? Five years down the drain in a single text message. I dried the intruders from my eyes and glared at the screen. His message, the words, they looked so foreign in their backdrop. My background was a picture of us in front of the Trevi Fountain during our vacation in Rome. The picture was now tainted by the cold words of someone who I thought I knew. This had to be a mistake. The Philip I knew would have never done this, much less through a text message. I searched my mind for a possible reason and then realized that his phone could have been stolen and maybe it wasn't him texting me at all. I called him instead of texting back just to confirm my suspicion, but all I heard on the other end was, You have reached 630 Two nine six seven five three six. Please leave a mess before hanging up. That had gotten me nowhere. I drove to his condo and saw his car parked out front. I was so sure things would be cleared up in no time. How wrong I was. The doorbell rang and rang for an eternity until he opened the door looking serious. Hey, I got your text. Did your phone get stolen or something? He ran his fingers through his hair and looked at me like when he was really annoyed. <coughs> just then I was pulled out of my trance by his coughing. He had begun to breathe, but not just breathe, but also smile. I stood in awe of how alive he seemed so suddenly. Just a few minutes before, his body had been lying motionless before me, and yet now here he was smiling with those perfect white teeth of his. I could not be a woman more in love. Hey, babe. Hey, sleepyhead, how are you feeling? I responded, handing him a glass of water as he sat up. My throat is dry, but other than that, I feel like I could lift a truck. He chuckled. It was music to my ears, even his voice was the same. His brow quirked in confusion. Would you mind telling me why the hell I'm in this box? His green eyes squinted as he looked at the logo printed on the lid of the box that had been tossed to the side. No. He whispered, almost inaudibly, while dropping himself onto the couch. I could see his eyes looking distantly into his past, searching for how he'd gotten here, for how he had died. He found his answer and turned to me with heaviness now clouding his face. I didn't make it, he said emptily. I took his hand in mine and sat next to him. You did! You did make it! You're here with me and that is all that matters. Plus, you are now healthy! This isn't my body, Di. This isn't me, he exclaimed. It is you, down to the very last freckle, and now the cancer isn't eating you away. I could feel a tear streaming down my cheek. Now you can stay here, with me. His burdened look shifted to a sad smile as his eyes focused on me. They were still there, the flecks of silver. 
He was quiet for a moment before speaking out. Does my dad know? I remember us talking about this option and not telling anyone. I responded slowly for I knew what was coming. Babe, your dad, he, uh, your dad passed away six months ago. His sobs were low but quite heartbreaking. This was the second time I had to endure this with him. I placed my head on his shoulder while I gently rubbed his back. I needed to get him back on track with his awakening, and I needed to know that he remembered the right things. Are you hungry? He looked up at me as I stood. I'm sorry, I just know that they said you would be famished once you woke up. That seemed to bring him back to reality and out of his pain slightly. I can't believe my dad. After all this time. I left him there to bring him the chicken sandwich I'd prepared for him before waking him up. I handed him the plate and he slowly began to chew while focusing on the carpet as if it had suddenly held all the answers. I took my place next to him and placed a kiss on his shoulder. He leaned his head over to mine. Ah, there it was. What I needed. I never doubted my abilities, but I had to have confirmation of it. I knew I could bring him back to me. I knew I could fix this mistake. How could a brilliant mind like mine not hold the solution? I had left the television I was watching before he awoke on. A cheerful brunette suddenly appeared on the screen, interrupting my train of thought. Thank you, Renaissance, for allowing me to have a second chance of life with my husband. His deadly accident didn't have to be the end. Next to her appeared a blonde man holding her hand with a smiling face in his early 30s. I'm so glad that I had backed up my priceless memories the previous week. Now I get to be here with my wife. Months have now gone by since I sat in front of my laptop, uploading his consciousness to the Renaissance servers. Of course, not before picking out all the unnecessary memories. He had no recollection of ever feeling fed up with me, or how he hated the way I nagged him for leaving the light on, among various other things. Or of the events that occurred the day I got the text message from his phone dumping me. What was the point in leaving any of that in? It would only get in the way of our happiness. I picked them out and deleted them just like I was used to doing at my workplace. Those memories were no better than the hacking viruses trying to sneak in through the firewall of the Pentagon. Nothing good could ever come from his desire of wanting to make me a part of his past. As I stare at my beautiful backyard with the white lilies and lilac roses, I wonder what stage of decomposition his old tainted body is at. Sure, it had beat cancer, but how could it not be toxic after all of that radiation? Plus, I was eager to get rid of the nasty lips that uttered such hurtful words that day. My Philip in the next room would never say or do anything as horrid as that. So what if it wasn't actually cancer that killed him? Faking the death certificate was as easy as faking a smile. And with his father in the grave and his friends living across the world, no one would ever know. We chose to tell no one of his awakening to prevent them from mourning his death from cancer. Ha! They say no two loves are the same, and they are right. The way that Philip looks at me now is such an improvement from the way he looked at me before. Thank you, Renaissance.